Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Hello, everyone. Uh, today is the Membership Success Club Runner Changeover Training, our last changeover training session. My name's Omar. I'm a product specialist at Club Runner. I'm joined by Serena. Hi, I'm also a club, uh, product specialist here at Club Runner. I'll be monitoring the chat and Q&A. If you have any questions, please feel free to enter them in the Q&A and I'll I do my best to help. You'll also see some articles po uh, put in the chat section as we go along just to help you as you need. Thanks. Thank you, Serena. Yes, Serena will be answering your questions in the Q&A box. Um, so if you look at the bottom of your Zoom meeting window, you'll see a Q&A button. You can submit your questions to us too. Um, and we also have the chat enabled for this webinar. So you guys can communicate amongst yourselves in the chat, but please do keep your questions in the Q&A box just for our own sorting. Um, let's go ahead and just talk a bit about membership success while I pull up the topic slide here. So some of you may be asking, what is membership success? Um, I'm not reading the topics here, but Membership Success is a module that helps you receive public and member referred prospect applications through Club Runner. Um, you'll be able to push those prospects throughout different statuses like applied, invited, accepted, and joined, as well as closed to um, go through that process and have them eventually join your club or close the application if for any reason they don't. Um, using Membership Success, you can send automatic emails using the automation tasks, as well as manual emails to your prospects throughout the whole process. And finally, um, we'll take a look at the statistics and analytics dashboard in the Membership Success module to show you which prospects ended up in which statuses. And then you can click a status to open up the prospects within that that status and continue working on them or review their information before they become a member. So again, just quickly going down our topics list, we'll be opening up our, our demonstration club and opening up membership success from the club's member area. We will update what are called sender profiles and recipient profiles. Sender profiles are what the emails appear sent from. So the name and email address that'll appear in the sender sort of line in emails and recipient profiles are what happens when a, when a person who receives an email from membership success clicks reply on those emails. So those replies would go to the recipient profile. So we'll take a look at that setup. And um, we'll also took a, took, a, took a look, take a look, pardon me, at the, at the list of email templates for the module, as well as update one of the templates with our own content. Um, once we configured some of the email templates, we'll, I'll show you how you can select an email template for an automation task, which are some of the reminders sent to the prospects, as well as reminders sent to the membership success chair for the module to alert them that, that, that there are some prospects in the invited status or um, under review status so they can come back and work on those prospects. Um, once we get through that configuration, I'm going to show you how you can link the membership inquiry form and refer a member form to the website. We're, and once we get that linked up, we're going to go ahead and enter a new prospect, manually email them in a follow-up, as well as view the, the prospect's profile in membership success. Finally, we'll convert a prospect to a member, or in, in the case where they don't end up joining the club, close the application so they, they don't remain in the invited status or accepted status. Um, they'll appear in the closed status. And finally, and I mentioned this when talking about membership successes, we'll take a look at the analytics dashboard. Time willing, we'll start the Q&A session at 7 p.m., where Serena will ask the questions live and answer them. And I'll show you using the share screen where um, you would work on those questions we bring up in the Q&A session. Let's go ahead and pull up our demonstration website. Bear with me here. So I've pulled up the Rotary Club of Kipling website. I can tell with the Welcome to Rotary Club of Kipling little text here at the bottom, as well as our club logo in the top left. To log into the club's member area, we would first pull up your club's website and then click member login in the top right. And I'm hovering over uh, that link with my cursor here. I'm going to go ahead and click member login. Okay, that'll open up the member login form where you'd enter your profile's username and password. If you do not know your username or password, you can recover your login credentials by clicking any of these three links, forgot username, forgot password, or new user. Just to show you, I'm gonna right click forgot password and open it in a new tab. Okay, and this is what that re retrieve login information form looks like. 
All you'd need to do is enter your profile's email address in the email address field and click this blue submit button. Once you click submit, if an email address is found in the system, a green pop-up will appear at the top of this retrieve login info dialog stating a profile has been found and that an email has been sent from the system. You would then open up your email address click the link to reset your password at the top of the reset password form you'd see your username and once you enter your new password you would come back to that member login form i already pulled up from the home page and click this blue login button okay and here we are we've logged into the kipling rotary club website i can tell because in the top right excuse me instead of member login it displays member area as well as my user's name and a logout link sorry my nose is itchy let's go ahead and get into the member area by clicking this member area link in the top right okay and here we are in the member area i do want to mention my user rusty is a site administrator for the club so he has the greatest access level to access membership success you would need the 50 dash club executive access level i'm hovering over the executives dashboard so if you're logging into your club's website you would ideally see executives in the top left as soon as you enter the member area or site administrators in the top left to denote that you have the appropriate access to work on the module you can also view your profile to confirm what access level is set um, and all of our dashboards, the site administrator dashboard, executive dashboard, editor dashboard, and members dashboard include a edit profile button. So you can click edit profile. And just to show you how a member would do that, we're going to open up the members dashboard and then click this orange edit my profile button. Oh, I didn't actually click it. There we are. There we are. So now we're in Rusty's profile. And to view your own access level in your profile, you would click the settings tab. And then on the settings tab for your profile, club access level is on the left. And we can see it reads 30 dash site administration, but it can also read 50 dash club executive or 40 dash president. And you would have access to use membership success, like I'm going to show you today, with the exception of linking the forms to the website. To link them to the home page, you would definitely need 30 site administration access level. And that's because to edit the home page, only the site administrators are able to update the club's homepage. But apart from that, everything else I'm going to show in the module, 50 club executives can use and 40 presidents can use as well. Let's go ahead and navigate to membership success in the member area, wherever you are, either on the dashboard or working in an email and communication, you can navigate around with the top blue bar I'm sort of uh, scrolling over and the gray bar below. Membership success is the second last item in the in the top blue bar. So I'm going to go ahead and click membership success. And the only option in the gray bar below is overview. So we're going to go ahead and click overview. OK, and this is the membership success dashboard page on the overview link we clicked. If we scroll down, it'll show you any new prospects that the uh, module has received with the public forms, potential prospects who've been pushed along to the review stage, and accepted applicants who are ready just before they've joined the club. OK, we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, take a look at the sender profiles, recipient profiles, automation tasks and email templates from the gray left-hand menu here on the dashboard in the settings section. Let's go ahead and get started with sender profiles by clicking sender profiles. Okay, this will open up the list of your club's sender profiles. For the membership success module, we can tell which sender profile is being used for membership success from the description entered for the profiles. So you'll see the one I've highlighted just reads membership success chair and the name for the profile is from the club. And this is the default sender profile for membership success. The other two we see, coats for kids and general donation campaign are from the donations module, which is a separate module we're not covering today, but donations module also uses sender profile to send out thank you emails for the Coats for Kids campaign and another sender profile for the general donation campaign. 
So just keep that in mind while you're working on the sender profiles page. If you have been using the donations module, you may see additional profiles. The membership success chairs profile is from the club. You can't change the name and it'll include this same description, the name of the club with the membership success chairs email. To enter your own sender profile for membership success, so anybody who fills out the form from the website or receive automated emails sees this sender profile's name and email address when receiving those emails from the system. So right now we have the sender name hashed or uh, dollar sign account underscore full underscore name dollar sign and the email address is set to sender profile at sync.sendgrid.net one of our testing email servers in the sender names case a dollar sign account full name dollar sign this is a merge field that would be replaced by the club accounts name so in our case the rotary club, club of kipling displayed in the top left of our home page so when when anybody applies to the forms on our website they would see the sender appear as rotary club of kipling with the email address sender profile at sync.sendgrid.net if they reply to that email, it can use the recipient profile we send for the module, or you can also enter that information in the sender profile for the module itself. Some of you may be asking at this point, how do I enter a custom sender name and email address? That's a great follow-up question. To edit the From the Club profile for membership success, we would click this drop-down arrow in the Actions column and then click View. And in the sender profile page, we would click this edit button in the top right of the details. Okay, and this will bring up the edit sender profile details dialog with that from the club profile for membership success. You, do, you cannot change the name. You can enter a better description if you'd like to. So whoever is viewing the sender profiles knows this one is for membership success. If we scroll down just past that description, this is the sender name, where ideally you'd enter your club's membership success chair's name. Let's say Rusty is um, not only our site administrator, but also um, the one primarily responsible for the membership success um, emails. So I've updated the sender name to be Rusty's full name, Rusty Cutting, and I would enter Rusty's email address in the sender email. I'm going to leave this as is because I'm not going to um, log into Rusty's email address. We will log into an email address for a prospect to view the emails sent from membership success, as well as where, uh, where the manual emails for those prospects would go to. So we'll send a manual email to one of our prospects and we'll see that in the email address inbox that we have for our demo today. Okay, further below is this by clicking this checkbox, you, you confirm consent for this sender profile to be stored in the system. You will see this checkbox in a few places where you're entering in personal information. It's just part of our GDPR regulations and policies to remain compliant. Um, further down is the reply to same as sender. So if they reply to an email from this sender profile, like the thank you for your application or any of the automated emails, this reply to information will appear in the reply line for the email. So in this case, the reply to name is the account name Rotary Club of Kipling with this merge field account full name. And the reply to email is a little different. Um, reply to underscore sender at syncs.sendgrid.net. Uh, most of the time, a single sender profile will be set with a sender name and their email address. And then you would check this reply to same as sender option. So if somebody replies to the sender profile's emails, they're sent back to the same sender profile email address, sender profile at sync.sendgrid.net. Okay. Um, and then there's that similar checkbox and this checkbox for set as default um, um, to use this profile for the module. If no profile is set as the default, um, then the emails from the system wouldn't deliver. By default, there we do set the first from the club sender profile as a default. So um, do go take a look at your sender profiles and update that those details with your with your membership chair's information, if you'd like his his or her name to appear on emails sent from the system, and when a, a prospect replies, are sent back to the membership success chair. I'm going to go ahead and save our updates 
with the orange save button there. And as soon as I click that orange save button, we can see the sender name has been updated to Rusty Cutting. So emails received by the prospects will display Rusty Cutting's name and this email address as the sent from email address. And if they reply, they'll see the dollar sign account underscore full name, which is a merge field for Rotary Club of Kipling. So they would see Rotary Club of Kipling and the replied email would go to reply to underscore sender at sync.sendgrid.net. And you can change those details for the sender profile. Next are recipient profiles. So if you do not enable these reply to information, reply to details for a sender profile, then you would, uh, uh, configure a recipient profile. So if somebody replies to an email, it's sent to the recipient profile. So I've clicked recipient profiles from the settings section, and you will see this membership success chair recipient profile. So if anybody replies to an automated email or an email sent from the system, it will be sent to this membership success chair with the name membership success chair and email address recipient profile at sync.sendgrid.net. I have disabled this recipient profile. We can enable it, but I'm just going to use the sender profile uh, uh, reply to instructions for the module and leave this as false for, for our membership success testing. But if you'd like to have different sender profiles and different recipient profiles, so a different profile sends the emails and a different profile receives the emails, then you would configure both a sender profile and a recipient profile. And to edit recipient profiles, it's very similar. You would just click the drop down arrow in the actions column on the right side of the page and then click view. You would then view the recipient profiles details and in the top right of the details box, click this edit button. Okay, and here you'll see the name, which you cannot change, but you can update the description to elaborate more on this recipient profile, as well as update the name that the email replies will appear going back to and email address. And this would be used if you have checked this set as default option and left the reply information out of the sender profile for the module. I haven't made any updates and we're not gonna use the recipient profile for our testing and demo today. But again, if you'd like a different profile to send the emails and a different profile to reply to and receive the emails, then you would set a sender profile and a recipient profile. Um, but, but again, for our training, I'll just leave um, this profile as is. Okay, next are the email templates before we jump into automation tasks. So email templates are the last link in this left hand settings section. So these are all of the email templates used by membership success. Um, there is a thank you for uh, your application. I'm just scrolling for it here. Um, so, so you may see this one here, internal notification referral campaign, new referral pending. This email is actually sent to your membership success chair, either the recipient profile or the sender reply to information. This is a notice that a new referral has been made on the website, specifically using the member referral form. Um, I'm just looking for the, here we are. So this is, this is the brand new prospect email template and let's update this one so this external message website inquiry thank you to prospect for application email template will appear in the in the prospects email inbox with the name with the email subject thank you for your interest in rotary club of kipling if you'd like to make changes to this automatic email from the system you would go to membership success overview email templates in the left hand list of links and then edit this external message website inquiry so the automated emails to thank prospects for applying will display your own content and to do that we would go back to this actions column click the arrow in the actions column and then click edit okay and this will pull up the edit email template for the thank you for your application email. If I scroll down, this is our system defaults content. You can replace this content with your own. So at the top, it has that same merge field account full name, which would be replaced with Rotary Club of Kipling. I can simply highlight the text and just type in my club's name if I'd like to. 
and now it'll always say Rotary Club of Kipling instead of using that merge field. Further below, you may see this high dollar sign first underscore name dollar sign merge field. This will include the prospect's first name when they enter it on the form. I would suggest leaving this as is, but um, you may want to just redo the whole email altogether, in which case you could just highlight the portion of the email you'd like to update, say this, this high first name application received, thank you. You would simply just highlight that text, delete, and then you could re uh, replace it with whatever you'd like to say. Hello, prospect, exclam, uh, thank you for, for your application. Um, our club will review as soon as possible and get back to you in an email. Okay, and now our thank you for your application emails will display with this hello prospect, thank you for your application text. Okay, if I scroll down some more, we have this clipboard image. You can replace images and add images to email templates. To do that, you would place your cursor where you'd like to include the image. And from the editor tools up at the top, we can click the image editor tool. <clears throat> It'll pull up this image properties dialog. The first step, if you've uh, joined us for our website content or emails training, is to click this browse server button to open up your club's image library. And in the media slash image library, you would click my images or a subfolder that you've created, say Rusty's images, and then select the image you would like to include. You can add more images by clicking the green upload button at the top of an image library's folder. So I'm going to go ahead and click upload, and we're going to go ahead and throw in the most current current rotary logo if I can find it. Um, I'm sure I have it here in the presidential themes. I'm pretty sure it's this one here. Okay, and there it is. To after uploading the image to the image library, I'm simply going to double click it to add it back to our preview. I can tell it's very large and the preview is not really encapsulating the image because it's super large, but I can adjust that height and width using the width or height fields. Let's cut the height down into a 16th. So I'm gonna make the height 100 and the width with the lock icon is automatically adjusted for me. If this was unlocked, we would have shrunk the height down to 100 and the width would still be very large. So I've left it locked. So the system takes care of updating the width for me. Last step after clicking that image button and getting the image from the library is clicking this OK button. And there we are, we have our image. It's probably smaller than I'd like and I can adjust that by double clicking the image and then increasing the height or width to finagle with it. But I'm gonna leave it as is. Okay, so there's our extra image in our email template to save our updates to the email template. I'm going to scroll to the bottom and then click this orange save button. <clears throat> okay, and now it's saved. The next time a prospect applies through the public website, they'll receive that updated email template with um, the club name written at the top, our custom thank you for applying message, and the newest Rotary theme logo. Okay, so these are where you manage the email templates in membership success, email templates, membership success templates. You can create brand new templates by clicking this orange add new template button. For the autom automatic emails, you would change the, the email template used by the automation to your custom email template with these steps. So you would click membership success, overview, and then from the list of links on the left, we would click automation tasks, okay? And on this automation tasks, you'll see uh, eight total e uh, automation tasks. Five of them are for prospects and three of them are to the membership success chair or recipient profile. So any of the ones to prospects, the first three are the automatic drip campaign emails. So um, you can include more information in the um, automatic campaign email template, the one month version, the uh, one week version, and the three month version. So you can update each of those templates and then save those updates. If you're, if you're editing the same email template that's used for the task, you don't need to switch the tasks email. But if we want to say, change this, um, reminder to provide more information that's sent to the prospect, I believe a week after um, they haven't replied to that reminder, you can 
click this drop down arrow from the automation tasks page and click change template. So I've clicked change template and you'll be brought to this uh, settings and preview page. If we click the select template drop down, you'll see all of the different uh, templates that you've saved to membership success. And we updated the external message. Uh, thank you. Ooh, I'm just looking forward to external message. Thank you to prospect for application. This is the one we updated. So if I select it, we see that custom text that we included at the top with the club's name and image. So now for this um, um, in email in or interest follow-up for the prospect, it would use this template. It's probably not a good um, use case because this automation task is for reminding the prospects they need to fill out their information to continue, um, but uh, uh, you can customize and then the email templates and then choose the template per automation task. Okay, and many times I've worked with clubs, they don't want to use these automa automated emails. Um, they prefer to just send their manual emails to the prospects and follow up with them and push them through the stages without reminding them or reminding the membership success chair. If you'd like to turn off the automated email tasks, you can. From the automation tasks page, you would click this actions drop down arrow and then click the make inactive option. And that would make it so this automated campaign that emails one month after the prospect has applied is no longer going to send emails. Let's go ahead and just click make inactive. And there it is. It's now inactive. And this, this automation task will no, no longer trigger one month after prospects apply to the club. And you can do the same for the one week campaign, three week, three month campaign, pardon me, um, the reminders to the prospects and the reminders to the membership success chair. So you would simply just click that action drop down and make an active. There are two other options on this automation tasks page history to view the history of when those automation tasks have been firing and the generate one time, which will trigger the automation task to rerun when you click generate one time. So for example, if you had three or so different prospects who have been in membership success for at least a week, if you came back to this automation tasks page and click this action drop down and then click generate one time, any prospects who fit that that criteria of being in the module for at least one week will be sent an email with uh, an email using this automation task, which you would choose using this change template button. I hope I've done a fair enough job of explaining automation tasks and sender and recipient profiles. I know it can be a little confusing with all of the different email templates that you match up to the tasks and then who those task emails are appearing as the sender profile and who those emails are being replied to the recipient profile or reply to information in the sender profile. So if you have any questions about automation tasks, the profiles or email templates, definitely feel free to reach out to us. Um, you can reach out to us from your club's member area by scrolling to the top and then clicking this blue help button or help module in the top blue bar. And then you can click this submit a ticket option in the gray bar just below. Let's go ahead and click it. And it'll pull up this contact us form on the Club Runner knowledge base, clubrunnersupport.com. And you could ask, uh, say, membership success help as the email subject. I think it's remembering an old ticket I filled out. And then your message could be, um, could you please help me with elaborating on the membership success email templates and automation tasks? Or we would really like this email to be used for new members to apply. How would we do that? And we would, and we would follow up to say, it's this specific automation task and email template you should update. Um, with steps on how you do that. So definitely feel free to reach out to us while trying out membership success. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned this earlier, but membership success is one of our newer modules. It's been available publicly with, for the last six months, not even uh, close to six months. And if you have feedback or um, improvements for the module, definitely feel free to include those in the email when reaching out to us or just separately as an email. We'd love to hear your feedback while using membership success. And uh, just a quick once over again, we set up the profiles, which you definitely should review and update sender profile, recipient profile, but for automation tasks 
um, you can definitely disable those and just trial out the membership success module without worrying about the automatic emails that are sent out. So definitely just set your sender and recipient profiles. And if you're not too worried about the automated emails, just come to automation tasks and disable them. And then you would just link up the refer a member and membership inquiry forms to the website to then submit a test prospect. And that's what we're about to jump into. Okay, so we're done with the setup. Let's go ahead and take a look at what the membership inquiry public form looks like. So in the top blue bar, I'm gonna click membership success again, then overview in the gray bar just below. We're back on the dashboard to view the public membership inquiry form, I'm going to click this membership inquiry link in the left-hand menu in membership success. Okay, and this pulls up the public membership inquiry form, which you would, which you or your site administrator would link into the homepage or into the homepage navigation menu at the top. Our site administrator has already linked this membership inquiry form into the navigation menu. It's using this join our club menu item. So if I go back to the home page, we're back on home. But if I click join our club, it opens up the same membership inquiry form. And that's because our site administrator opened up membership success, got the URL for membership inquiry, and then went to edit the home page and navigation menu and included the navigation menu item to the form. If you'd like a refresher on that, um, definitely check out our knowledge base. How do I build our menu, our website menu article? It'll take you through creating a custom URL link where you just need the URL, in this case, the actual form URL for membership inquiry. Um, we will also make our recordings available for the recent changeover trainings and website designer training um, once our team has processed and published the recordings, probably about two-ish weeks as we work to review the content and make those recordings available. But we do have an article, How Do I Build My Menu, which will go over linking this into your club's navigation menu using the same join our club text or whatever else text you'd like that to appear as. Let's go ahead and fill in a prospect. Um, our, our new prospect here is going to be um, Jane Doe. Okay, and I'm just going to enter in a testing email address that we will not log into, but I have prepared another prospect and email address that will log into their email address inbox to see the emails from the system. So Jane Doe and email is all that we require for this first contact detail section. We have a how did I how did you hear about our club for a question and some follow up options. So I'm just going to quickly select some stuff. Um, let's say a web search. Jane heard about the club through a web search. They are not a Rotary alumni. They haven't been part of another Rotary club. So no on that second one as well. Have you, have you worked with other service organizations? I'm gonna say no, but if you select yes, um, they can enter more information in this tell us about yourself section. So let's leave that as no. In this case, Jane is a um, works in retail and uh, why they want to join. Um, I really like the Rotary Club of Kipling's Fun Run events and want to join. Okay, so this is the form that you would also have with your membership success module. Um, you would just link it to the website and your prospects would fill it out and then check this checkbox and there is a capture test at the bottom. Great. And I'm going to click this orange submit button. Okay, and as soon as I click submit as a prospect, we get this thank you for your interest message. Jane would also receive an email from the system. It's actually the the email template we changed the thank you for your application one from club runner to their email address and jane is also saved in the membership success module as a prospect let's before we jump into viewing the prospect statuses i do want to talk about a second form that comes with the module so back in membership success i'm in the membership success dashboard there is this refer a member form Let's go ahead and open this on the website. So this refer a member form requires login and it's for other members in your club to refer a prospect they know or, or a person they know to the club. And the form is very similar. It includes first name, last name, email, um, not as many questions because the member is filling out this prospect's form for them. 
Um, and just to show you that this form does require login, I'm simply going to copy the link at the top, at the top of my browser here by right-clicking and clicking copy. And then I'm going to open up an incognito browsing session in my Google Chrome. This is outside of Club Runner, but incognito windows effectively don't remember that I'm logged in. They don't remember that I've logged into one club website or any websites for that matter. So I'm gonna paste in that URL for the refer a member form and then click enter on my keyboard. And before I even see the form, I'm prompted to log in. And that's because it's the refer a member form. It's for your members to fill out for prospects they think would be interested in joining the club or that they've made the member aware they want to join the club. Let's go ahead and close this out. And again, that refer a member form works very similar to the membership inquiry form. Um, they would generate as a new prospect once the member fills out the prospects details. I'm going to close this and go back to the membership success dashboard. I'm just going to quickly refresh my browser to make sure our new application is entered. There we are. And if I scroll down, there is our one new prospect update for Jane Doe's prospect status. If I scroll down just a bit more, we have this prospect status dashlet that shows you all of the prospects in the new section pending response if they've, if they've been followed up to but haven't replied potential prospect, that's once they've been pushed on to prospect, you can then push them along to applicant and then push them along to potential member and then send them an invitation. Once they receive the invitation, they'll be put in this invited status. They can then accept and fill out the form. If they do accept, they'll be moved to accepted. There is also a final joined or closed status that don't appear on this dashboard page because those two statuses are the last step for prospects. Just to show you before we jump into a prospect and send them an email and view their notes, you can view prospects in the joined or closed statuses by opening up the dashboard and then clicking analytics at the top here. So I'm going to go ahead and click analytics. And as soon as I do, we lose those three um, numbers at the top. They're replaced by a bigger version of prospect status, which includes joined and closed. And closed, the closed status means they haven't become a member of the club. Their application has been closed and joined denotes that they were invited, they accepted, they filled it up with the form and uh, the membership success chair or administrator logged back into membership success and pushed the prospect to membership. And I'm gonna show you guys exactly how we do that for our new prospect, as well as this invited prospect that I have entered before. Let's go ahead and continue working on Jane's prospect record. So I'm gonna go back to membership success overview. We're on the dashboard. If I scroll down, there's our numbers for the dashboard. And if I scroll down just a bit more, we're going to click the new status to open up all of the prospects in new. So I've gone ahead and click new and it shows me Jane Doe, that new uh, prospect. I have a few actions from this prospects list page. I'm simply gonna click the drop down arrow on the right to show you the options. We can send them an email to just send them an email from Club Runner. We can request more information, which will push them to the pending information status. We can add them to applicants, which will push them straight to the applica applicants status. And we can close the prospect, which will pu uh, push it to the close status to close it all together. They didn't end up becoming a member. Um, so you're closing the prospect. If you'd like to uh, add, add notes or send emails, you can also click to open the prospects profile. So I'm gonna click Jane Doe's name. And here we are in the prospect profile for Jane Doe. If I scroll down, we'll see a detail section with the information they filled on the public website. I didn't enter a phone or yet enter the address information. So that doesn't appear yet. We also have personal details if they fill this out on the request more information email. Um, as well as Rotary organization history, which is on that first email, this consent section to say, yes, I, I've given consent, the club can store my data and send me emails, um, inquiry details for how they heard about your club and prospect details, which really include a manually updated interest level, um, the source as to how they got into membership success. Um, this checkbox receive automated campaign emails is for the um, three prospect drip campaign emails, the one week, one month and three month 
automation emails. You can turn it off for one prospect while leaving it on for others. And finally, prospect sponsor. For any of the fields you can edit, you would simply click this edit button in the top right of the section. So contact information, prospect details, personal details, etc. And then in the edit dialog, you can include that information for the prospect. So we can say, oh, Jane gave us her work address. It is 101 uh, Placeholder City Street at um, Placeholder City. And I can fill in um, the state slash province and postal code. Okay. And there we are, we've entered some address information for our prospect. You can also send them emails from the prospect profile simply with this send email button in the top right. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's send Jane an email by clicking send email. Here in this send email dialog, you'll see the sender information. By default, it'll be set to me, um, which is your own profile's information. So Rusty's Rusty's profile email address is cutting r at sync.sendgrid.net and it'll reply to his same email address. If I'd like to use the module sender profile, I'd simply click sender profile and then choose the sender profile, choosing the from the club profile because the other two are for the donation module. So we're going to go ahead and click from the club and then we'll see that sender profile name and email address we entered earlier for the main sender profile. And we enabled the reply to option from that sender profile. So we see that sender profile reply to information instead of the recipient profile in this reply to section. Okay, so you will see these profiles, the sender profile and recipient profile in various places in the module when sending emails or when viewing email history. Okay, scrolling down some more, this send email dialog, we can choose a template that's been saved into the module to fill up that information for our email to the prospect. Most of the time you wouldn't use a template unless you've saved your sort of first response email to the member, and then you would select it from the select template drop down. But say you just want to uh, send them a quick email saying, um, could you send us your profile picture um, and a uh, uh, and any other information about your application. So we'll enter a quick subject here, um, um, include profile picture and more information, please. The, uh, so if, as we scroll down, we have this email body, which is the emails text. It also includes merge fields. So dear dollar sign, Nick underscore name dollar sign and the same for last name. So when the prospect fills in their first name and last name on the uh, membership inquiry form, these merge fields will populate their information. So in this case, dear Jane Doe, um, nickname defaults to first name if nickname isn't entered. So it'll just use first name. And then we can include more information. Um, thank you for your application. Um, please reply to this email with your profile picture and any other information you would like to share with us about your application. Thank you. Okay, um, so now I'm pretty sure I have a typo. There it is. Like, and I thought I had an extra space, but I, oh, there it is at the start. Okay, so that's all I'm going to send. You can include more email text if you'd like to. You can also include links and images. I'm going to leave that out to move along our tutorial. We actually only have about 15 more minutes to push this prospect to accepted and joining the membership and closing another. So let's just go ahead and send this email. So I'm going to go ahead, pass this text box. We can include attachments along with links and um, images. Um, I'm going to leave that out. If, if you've attended um, our club overview, you may have seen the select files for upload or our bulletin webinar. We also did this. Um, email options, you can copy yourself on the email in addition to the sender and reply to information from the sender profile. Um, you, you would also use me. If you use me, um, you would just get a copy of the email as you send it. Okay, scrolling back to the bottom. You can also schedule the email to send at a later point or send it right away. So I've clicked schedule. And if I click schedule, we have this date 
field where I can click into and then choose the date the email should be sent out, say April 27th, at what time, let's say 5 p.m. So I've pressed five on my keyboard and then I press tab zero, so 5 p.m. flat, but I'd like this email to send out right away so we can see it in the email history. So I'm gonna select send right now and then click this orange send button in the bottom right. Okay, and, and now we've followed up, we've sent an email to Jane. Um, it will take just a moment to deliver it from the system, but they should have received their thank you for your application email. We can find this email history in the email history tab for the prospect. So I've clicked email history. And if I scroll down, there's our thank you for your interest email, which was through filling out the form. I don't see our sent email just yet, but it should appear here within the next two to three minutes. Along with this email history page that also shows the email preferences, you can add notes to a prospect. I'm going to click the notes tab. And here you'll see um, the notes, the important updates from the system. So in this case, Jane Doe had filled out the form. So that note is automatically applied by the system. It shows Rusty Cutting's name because he is set as the uh, membership success chair as the recipient profile, but we can add our own notes by clicking this orange add button in the top right. And I could say, um, Jane has let us know that they are not able to join until next year due to work commitments. Okay, we will push Jane's prospect status along through a few of them, but then we'll close it out because they're not able to join the club. But I have prepared that one other um, prospect to join the club and I'll show you how that process looks. Let's go ahead and save our note. Actually, before I press save, you can tag notes. So just scrolling down, we have this tag section while adding a note. If you add a tag, you'll be able to select it for future notes. Um, so in this case, I'm going to create a new tag called um, delayed join because Jane can't join us right now, but may want to in the future. So we can view for these note for these prospects with the tag delayed join to see which ones um, may end up joining us later, but for now can't. So, oops, I had to click enter, join, enter, there we are. And then this last one is linked to, and it'll link to other prospects you've added to um, membership success. So if you have two prospects who are related to each other, you can use this linked to field to link them together. I believe our other prospect is Charles. Oh, no, um, oh, it was that one, Don Joe. So I'm gonna go ahead and just type in um, Don, oh, John. <laughs> Nope, Joe Don, there we are. So it, I've, I'm gonna link Jane's prospect uh, 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 note to Joe's prospects. Um, he will also have a similar note showing that they're linked together. Okay, and last step to save our note is to click this orange save button in the bottom right. Okay, and there we are. We've updated the prospect with the notes. Um, we've taken a look at the email history as our second email sent. Yes, it is. I've gone to email history, and here's that manually sent email using the send email button in the profile. It says include profile picture and more information, please. And that was the manual email we typed out. If I go back, let's push Jane along to invited, but then close it. And then for the other invited prospect, accept, have them fill out the form and join the club, and then we'll jump into reports. Let's go back to uh, membership success as a whole by clicking membership success in the top blue bar, then overview. I can also click go back, but just to show, I'm going to go ahead and click overview. We're on the dashboard again. I am somebody looking to review our prospects. I'm going to click that new status. We've already entered notes and viewed email history. Let's push Jane along to the next status by clicking the action drop down for Jane's prospect record. And then we can click request more information, which will send them the automation task request more info email template or add to applicants to jump the prospect to applicants. Let's do add to applicants. And it brings up this pop up. This action will change the prospect to an applicant and up their, update their status to qualified applicant. Are you sure? I'm going to click OK. And we're brought into Jane's profile. And instead of new status, we see qualified applicants. If I go back to membership success overview and then scroll down, 
she's no longer in new. Jane's no longer in new. If I scroll down some more, we've skipped um, pending response and potential member and just jumped to qualified applicant for Jane's prospect record. Okay, we can click qualified applicants. It'll just filter the qualified applicants. And I can push Jane along further by clicking that same drop down arrow on the right side of the page and then click consider for membership. I can also do this from their prospect profile by clicking their name. And in the top right, instead of clicking send email, we're going to click this action drop down arrow. And then we can click consider for membership, close prospect, or delete. Let's consider for membership and then close the prospect. So I'm going to go ahead and click consider for membership. We get a similar dialogue to say, hey, they're going to go to the potential member status. Are you sure? OK. <clears throat> and qualified member has now updated to potential member. And if we go back to membership success, let's quickly membership success overview, scrolling down to prospect status, there it is potential, potential member. And that's where Jane is currently. If I click potential member, we can scroll down and then click the drop down and then send them their invitation, which will send them um, the invite to fill in more information for their profile. We, I, I have prepared the invitation status for another prospect. So we're going to stop with Jane. We're just going to close it. And to close a prospect's application, we're just going to click close prospect from the options here. Details, uh, it gives us this dialogue to say, why are, uh, is the prospect's application being closed? Um, I'm going to refer to the note. Jane had let us know um, she is not able to join the club until, oops, until next year due to business obligations. There we are. And I'm going to go ahead and click the orange close button to save this note to the prospects application. Done. So Jane is now under the closed statuses. Um, we can start over their prospect status. So they'll start as new again. And we can come back to this next year to begin that process by filtering for closed and then clicking the actions drop down. We've been clicking for all of our prospects. Instead of send email, we're going to click this gray start over option and it'll throw them back into new where we can send more emails, view the prior notes, um, and then push them through the statuses. Hopefully this time around, they are able to join the club. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the other prospect in the invited status and complete their application. They ended up joining the club. So going back to the top blue bar, I'm going to click membership success, then overview in the gray bar just below. Scrolling back down the dashboard page, Jane is no longer in this prospect status. Um, there isn't closed, but if we open up the analytics dashboard, we would see Jane's closed application. Let's see the one invited uh, member here, or prospect, I should say. I'm going to click invited. And if we scroll down, Joe Don is entered. And that's my testing email address here, charles.hampton15999 at gmail.com. So I'll be able to show you the emails received by the system before we updated the template. And then the invitation, which has the member or the prospect fill out their details. And then we're going to come back into Club Runner and push them to member. So let's go ahead and pull up Joe Don's email address, charles.hampton15999, um, to show you what those emails from the module look like. So I've opened up a new tab, and my demonstration browser does use Charles' email address. So I'm just going to click Gmail in the top right. Here is Charles's email address he had applied earlier, or sorry, Joe, Joe Don's email address who had applied earlier. And I can click the first email. Thank you for your interest in Rotary Club of Kipling. This is that thank you for your application email before we updated it with our custom thank you info and uh, image. So they just received this automatic one without our updates, but future ones will receive the text we entered and that additional image. And the invitation email, once you push somebody to, inv uh, to invitation status, they will receive this email from the system. So I've clicked into it. We would like to formally invite you to the Rotary Club of Kipling. Hi, Joe. Membership approved. Accept and confirm my details. Before I click this button, my, my browser remembers that I've logged into Club Runner with Rusty's profile. So I don't want to confuse it with the admin session that I've logged in with versus this prospect that I'm trying to fill out. So what I'm going to do is go back into my email and just copy the link for this button and open it up in incognito. Your prospects wouldn't have to be concerned about 
a, a, a being logged into the member area when clicking the link from the button. They would just, or clicking the link from the email. Um, they don't have an account or access in the club. So they would just click the button from this email and it would open up this form that I've opened up in an incognito tab. So here's that membership invitation form. They would just click the button from the email. This would open and then they could fill in more information about um, joining the club. The first question is, do you wish to join? Yep. The personal details section will display the information they had entered in the first membership inquiry form, plus a few more fields to enter, like their address information, which was not included on that first form. So I'm going to have to fill out that address information. I'm going to select preferred address home and then just enter in a address, placeholder address, um, and then a placeholder city, or, yeah, or let's just have it be Flower Town. And they are from uh, the USA. Let's say they're from uh, Florida. And I'm just going to throw in a postal code. Their gender, we do have male, female, another gender identity, and prefer not to ident identify just to capture all of um, the gender rainbow, if you will. I'm going to go ahead and choose uh, prefer not to identify in this case. And if they have been a prior Rotary member. Um, ideally, they'd enter a Rotary ID number so you can match that up when adding their information to Club Runner. So let's say um, uh, Joe Don was a prior Rotarian. He knows his Rotary ID number. I can enter, um, um, he can enter that into this form here. Okay, and there is this capture chat test. I'm gonna check it. It is prompting me because I'm in an incognito browser. So I do have to um, just click a few buses here. Very good. And then I can click this orange submit button. And now Joe Don has effectively submit his information to the club. And it prompts this message. We are excited that you accepted our invitation to become a member. We will process your details accordingly. So let's go back in as Rusty and view the details Joe had entered and add him as a member to our club. So I'm going to close out this incognito tab and go back into the member area. We're just filtered on prospects, but let's sort of start fresh here. Rusty is looking for any members who filled the form. I'm going to click membership success in the top blue bar, then overview in the gray bar just below. Scrolling down, I can go to um, the accepted status. So I'm in prospect status. There's accepted, the very last one. I've clicked accepted and here Joe Don's uh, prospect. Interest level has not changed throughout the whole process that is manually updated. Um, so if you'd like to say um, they're more and more interested, you would edit that from the prospects profile, but I haven't uh, made use of that feature. Um, to accept their application, we would just click the same actions drop down arrow on the right of the prospect list and then click add individual to club. If they didn't accept the application or wouldn't like to join the club, we can close prospect, but that's not what we're going to do in this case. I'm going to go ahead and click add individual to club and then on this dialogue, click OK to confirm that they're going to be added to our club. It'll it'll bring up the regular new member form in Club Runner, but populate with all of the information they've entered in the first membership inquiry form and the second invitation details form. So scrolling down there, Joe Don, the email address he entered at the very first form, the gender he entered in, in the form we just opened up, the address information we just entered in that invite form, and um, their Club Runner account is created by default with their username being their first dot last name dot account ID number. Um, you can update the password or um, have them reset their own password with the, for, with the steps I showed you at the start of our training here. When I click member login, any of those three links, they just need to enter their email address and then they could set their own password. Um, and finally is the send email notification to this member. This is part of our regular add new member form. Um, by default, it'll use the system welcome new member email template, but you can change it to be a custom email template if you've created a custom welcome new member email template. Okay, so last step is to click this blue add member button. <clears throat> and I do see the system is processing here. And there we are, we're in the member profile for Joe Don, who was once a prospect, but now has a full-fledged member profile. And to double check, we can click 
membership in the top blue bar instead of membership success, and then click member list in the gray bar just below. And if I filter for the last name D, there's Joe Don's, or yep, Joe Don's prospect record now pushed to active member. And let's go ahead and take a look at the membership success analytics before we jump into questions here. So let's view for that closed and join status, membership success in the top blue bar, overview in the gray bar just below. <clears throat> We're going to click analytics while on the dashboard. And if we scroll down just a bit more, in the prospect status, we include joined and closed. And if I click joined, we should see Joe Don's um, application, his prospect application push to member, which appears here in the tag member and joined. And if I go back to the dashboard page or the analytics page, pardon me, I can click closed and we'll see Jane Doe's prospect. And if I click Jane Doe's prospect record, we can see the notes where I mentioned she isn't able to join at this time. So if I click notes, scrolling down, here's that note, April 23rd, Jane had let us know she's not able to join the club until next year due to business obligations. So next year, we can come back to membership success, view for that closed prospect status, and then click the action drop down and start over for Jane. It would just push them to new. Um, you could then do uh, what we had done for Jane. We just pushed them straight up to applicant or invited, um, send them that invitation email or follow up with them in a manual email to get any last bits of info. And once they're ready, um, we would click this action drop down. You would see the um, add to membership option once they're in that invited stage and they filled out that info. And then you would just use the same add member form to add them, which would pull from the information they entered. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into questions. Um, so thank you, Serena. If you have any you'd like to ask me live, we also have some prepared questions. Perfect. Um, so uh, we didn't have as many questions this time, but I was able to get through uh, the ones that were asked uh, through our session. Did have a couple of prepared questions that I thought would be a good idea. I did, do think we did touch on them. Yes. So if we want to add notes to a member profile, prospect profile, custom ones, how would we go about doing this? So the way we would do this is we would go into the prospect profile. That's right, going into all prospects. And then we would click the profile. And then we'd see notes there. And then on the right-hand side, we got that yellow add button. So that's how we would add our notes. And the other, we uh, our system also automatically records notes, um, as you can see. So it's there's automated notes as well. This application is being considered for membership. They have filled in the membership inquiry form. This does help track the up-to-date status of a prospect and let you know at what stage they are at um, within that uh, prospect member timeline or time frame, and whether you might want to reach out to them. Maybe you you notice that they um, filled in the membership inquiry form. Uh, they were changed to applicant. But they've had zero interaction for the club for a few weeks. You want to give them a call. Hey, you know, are you still interested? Is there anything else I can help you with? Um, that would uh, kind of give you that flag. Um, the other thing that I wanted to go back into is um, how do we check the um, email history or how many, how, where can we see the automatic and manual emails? So that's in that email history tab. That's right, just to the left. And we can see everything, the sent date. Um, if you can, um, you can also see here um, if it's been bound. So if the, let's say the email address they gave you is fake. Um, for whatever reason, uh, it, or it's just a spelling error or a typo, it's bounced. Okay, the email bounced. Maybe I should give them a call because the email's not working. We want to figure that out and make sure we get them back on that uh, timeline towards membership. Um, I'll speak to that just a quick. Yes. That was a great point you brought up, Serena, and I didn't cover it in the webinar. Um, mm -hmm. So if they give you an email address that isn't valid or they typo the email address, you would see this status change to bounced or blocked or dropped, like Serena had mentioned. If that happens, the email preferences section would update to prevent further emails to the prospect until the receive emails option is reset to yes again. 
First, you'd probably want to update the email address to make sure you have a valid one, and then you would go back to email preferences and switch that on. But just to quickly go over that again, you can update the email address by going to the details tab for a prospect. And in the contact information, you would click the edit button, and that's where you can enter in the correct email address. Once you've got that entered, you'd click this orange save button, and then you would go back to email history and edit the email preferences to re-enable receive emails. This checkbox would be turned off because a prior email was bounced or blocked. Um, you would just come back to email preferences, flick this on after updating the email address and click save. And then now future emails will be delivered to Jane and their status would appear on this email history page. Thank you for that addendum, Serena. Thank you. Um, so Debbie did ask, uh, is there a way to add the mentor club member who is on the prospect of applicants content or the comp, uh, application? So I think this would be where we would have, um, how did you hear about our club? Would that be where we would put it or is there another place? A close, a close, a close one. Oh, um, prospect sponsor is what I think um, you're asking for, Debbie. It's not necessarily mentor, um, but I think sponsor is similar. So you would enter the sponsor's name or the mentor's name into the prospect details box with the same edit button on the details page. Then I could say, um, in this case, the mentor for Jane um, was Charles. And then, uh, or let's say it was Rusty. It was Rusty, the same membership success chair um, that we were using. So I can go ahead and save that. And now it's saved into their uh, application, their pro prospect application. If they become a member, Rusty cut Cutting would be listed as the sponsor on the ad member form. Another great question. Perfect. Um, Lori is asking where we can, can find email replies. Now, I don't think we track email replies at this time within Club Runner, but we do know that for these uh, recipient profile emails, you can set up a custom one for your club and then give everybody at your club access to that where the people are managing the prospects and then they'll be able to track the replies. Yes, is that yes, that is correct. Um, effectively, if you're using the sender profile, Lori, I'm gonna go back to sender profile just to show you. So uh, membership success overview. And from the list of links on the left, I'm gonna click sender profiles. And again, the one for membership success includes the, the description, the name of the club with the membership success chair's email. It's also titled from the club. If I click the action drop down arrow and click view and click edit, actually, I don't even need to click edit. Right here, you'll see the name that is that the emails are sent as. So any emails from membership success where sender profiles being used will appear with the name Rusty Cutting and the email address sender profile. If they reply to this sender profile, Lori, we've included the reply to information just below. And that merge field is gonna be Rotary Club of Kipling, which is our account name. And the reply will be sent to reply to underscore sender at sync.sendgrid.net. If you'd like the sender profile to have the same reply to information, simply click this edit button in the top right. And if we scroll down, we can check this reply to same as sender option, and then click this orange save button. And as soon as I do that, the reply to information is hidden, replaced with reply to same as sender. And now emails will appear from Rusty Cutting with the email sender profile at sync.sendgrid.net. And if they reply, it'll go to the same rusty cutting sender profile at sync.sendgrid.net. So I hope that helps while you update the sender profile information for the module. If you have this one set as default, but leave recipient profile as false as out, then it will just use the sender profile and reply to information for sender profile for membership success as a whole. And I think that's easier than managing a sender profile and a recipient profile. So definitely just set the sender profile double check on the recipient profile setup. Um, you may need to check that this is set to false for the default option. Um, and at that point, you would just be rolling with the sender profile. Another great question. Um, Thank you so much, Omar. You were really helpful with adding that. Um, is there anybody else with questions? Feel free to just pop them in the q and I'm more than happy to help. Um, I'm more than happy to help with anything. Please feel free to reach out.
Yeah, I think we have two more prepared questions and that, that should take yeah. us another seven minutes here. I did think we go th went through that. So that's why I was okay. kind of glossing over that. But um, how do we turn off automatic drip campaign emails and membership success yeah. chair reminders? So that would I, be in the automation tasks, right? Yes. yes. So here on the automation tasks page, you would, um, if, you're, if you're not interested in sending these automatic reminders to your prospects the one month after, one week after, three month after, which would probably be different campaigns. You'd have a first drip campaign with just some introductory info as your first week uh, campaign email. One month would include a little more and three months would include whatever else you're looking to share with them. But if you're not interested in sending these automated emails, just pull up automation tasks page for membership success, click this drop down arrow in the actions column and click make inactive. If you'd like to really test one with a prospect you have entered already, you can click that action drop down again and then click the generate one time option, which will generate the automation task and then send emails for any prospects that fall in the criteria. So in this case, um, I've clicked the drop down arrow for one month after this generate one time, even though it's inactive, would generate if we had prospects who'd been in the module for at least one month. I hope I'm explaining that well. Um, That's perfect. Um, so uh, we did have another email from Gary. Is it possible to have two emails for the sender so that the membership chair and the, another officer see the email traffic? Um, that's new to me. I actually don't know. Omar, can you help with this one? Yeah, that's a great, that's a great question, Gary. Um, so the sender profiles for the module can only include one email address. What I'd suggest as a way to work around that would be to create, um, if we manage your club's domain name, we're able to create something called email forwarding addresses. And if we manage your domain name, um, uh, 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 ideally you would know that, you know that Club Runner manages your domain name, but for example, sake, uh, Rotary Club of Kipling has the domain name kiplingrotary.org and our team, our domains team manages that domain name. We can create a membership chair at rotarykipling.org email forwarding address. So if anybody um, um, replies to that email or sends emails to uh, um, um, membership at rotarykipling.org, it'll forward any of those emails to the recipients for that email forwarding address, which is different than the sender profile. So uh, I would I would check with us, Gary, if we manage your domain name so we can create that email forwarding address. But if you manage your own domain name or you guys have an email service provider outside of Club Runner, you can create a similar forwarding email address or shared email address inbox amongst your club and then set that as the sender profile so everybody either knows to log into that shared email or you're using that configured forwarding email address to automatically forward those emails you would just enter that forwarding email address as the email address for the profile definitely Oh, okay, great, Gary. If we manage your domain name, definitely reach out to us and, and, and request an email forwarding address. We can create up to five for uh, up to five different email forwards for one domain name. You would set one as the sender profile for membership success. And whenever somebody replies to the sender profile, as long as you've, as you've set it as the reply to information, it'll go to all of the people who are set as recipients for that email forwarding address. So definitely a more in-depth question than I was expecting, but um, there are a few options using a domain email service provider. If we manage it using Club Runner's domain email um, enhancements, um, we can create one of those email forwarding addresses. Okay, uh, just one final question here, Omar. Hold on with me for a minute. Um, so uh, how can people submit ideas and feedback for membership success? Um, this is fa fairly straightforward. You just contact us. You contact us at any time, either through the help pages, submit uh, tickets, as Omar is showing here. You can email us at support at clubrunner.ca or call us at 1-855-621-2582 to give us feedback on this or any topic to ask us any questions, especially club specific questions you may not be comfortable asking in this live session. We are very happy to help and we're here for you anytime. Yeah, well, we'd love to hear your feedback as you guys try membership success. Definitely feel free to contact us with this contact us form. Another place you can share your feedback with us is clubrunnercommunity.com. I'm just gonna pull that up clubrunnercommunity.com. 
you can log into the community website using your same club level or district level club runner credentials. You would just click this login button and enter in your club runner username and password. Once you've logged in, if you'd like to see other feedback customers are posting or how they are using club runner or feedback specific to membership success, just scroll down the general tab here. Here is that feedback and suggestions channel. So if I click feedback and suggestions, I'm not logged in, but if I was, I would see a new post button in the top right where you could post your feedback. You could also click into threads opened by other customers, other club runner users to see what they're suggesting. So I see Nathan Crowder shared a suggestion for attendance and so on. Um, but if you want more resources or just general information, we have a general section as well, a best practices section, an announcement section, and so much more. Definitely check us out on clubrunnercommunity.com. Um, I think that's all we have for questions. So I'm going to pull out the outro slide and uh, we'll do outros. Thank you so much, Omar. I really appreciate all of the information you've gone through today. I've also appreciated all the engagement with people through the chat and the Q&A. Really, really great questions. Lots of good suggestions. Very happy to, to be able to help. And um, yeah, thank you for not leaving me hanging on my side of the line while Omar was doing all that talking. <laughs> well, I appreciate you, Serena, as just as much as all of our attendees today. I know quite a few of us joined us on a Sunday evening, so I hope you had a relaxing weekend. I hope this webinar was informative for trying out membership success. Do keep in mind it's one of our newer modules, so we're we're we're. Uh, uh, receptive to many suggestions and feature improvements for membership success, do share them with us either by emailing us with the contact us form on clubrunner2support.com or the email address I have pulled up in front of you, support at clubrunner.ca, or share them with us on clubrunnercommunity.com. Log in, see what other customers are doing with their Clubrunner accounts. If you'd like the Clubrunner mobile app or your members would like the Clubrunner mobile app so they can log in, download member contact information to their mobile device, um, clubrunner.com forward slash mobile. It also lives in the admin tab in your Club Runner member area. You would just click uh, Club Runner mobile from the gray bar below and you'll see the two links to download the mobile app from the Android store and the Apple store. And this is our last changeover training session. So there are no further changeover training sessions this year. We will definitely be back for next year and we'll have, uh, I imagine, more training throughout this year. So definitely stay posted on Club Runner community.com the news and announcements section for more training we also have regular weekly webinars which will probably be coming back um, in a week or two's time so keep your eyes peeled for that and uh, and again thank you everybody for joining us today thank you everybody i really appreciate everything have a great night <laughs>